In the two weeks that followed China's border policy announcement, search interest for flights from China increased 83%. But interest to fly to Thailand grew 176%, and to Singapore, 93%. Now, of the countries that Chinese travelers search the most, Singapore and Thailand are the only two that have not announced travel rules for Chinese visitors. But South Korea and Japan are among those that have. And now some Chinese are saying they're no longer planning to visit them. Not because they're, being, they're boycotting, but because they're being blocked, they say. Those who spoke to CNBC said that while they're not pleased about singled out, being singled out by these new rules, they are willing to follow them. But South Korea and Japan are taking it a step further, they say. Neither country is increasing flight capacity from China. Plus, Chinese travelers say even if they can get a seat on a plane, it's hard to get visas to visit. Now, as a result, some say they're now headed to Thailand, which according to Trip.com is the third most popular destination after Macau and Hong Kong. Kong for Lunar New Year trips this year. Now, reactions to these rules ranged from indifference to anger, with some of the strongest opinions coming not from Chinese citizens, but from foreigners who live there who said they believe the policies are discriminatory and politically motivated. Yet, as one Chinese citizen told me, travel is really the least of people's concerns right now. She said people are still sick, and airfare is expensive, with flights that used to cost hundreds of dollars now well into the thousands. Now, sure enough, I looked into what it costs to fly nonstop from Shanghai to Singapore this Lunar New Year, and the average airfare was around $3,600, and that was for an economy class seat. Back to you. This is a very interesting uh, development then, uh, Monica. So clearly uh, some destinations are going to be more welcoming than others, and Thailand is a standout here. That's exactly right. Um, I think it, from the people that I spoke with, it's feeling like that a bit of a personal sting coming from South Korea and Japan. Um, those are very popular places with Chinese travelers, um, as are Thailand and Singapore. But um, really, it, all the surveys coming out were showing that South Korea and Japan were really leading the way. Now, that's from bookings. We're seeing that that's actually not where they're going, not because they don't want to go, but they're just feeling like they can't get there. Um, to be clear, everybody that I spoke to said that they had no problem with testing. They said tests are easy to get in China, not a big deal, they're used to it. Um, and they also said, you know, if you and I were going to go to China right now, we would have to test to get in. They weren't upset about that particular rule that's being applied, say, by Australia and the U.S. It was really more um, Japan and South Korea that where they were feeling it a bit personal. And I guess maybe to put it into perspective, it would be like um, if New Zealand had the most stringent travel requirements of all towards Australia, or maybe Malaysia to Singapore. It does feel a bit personal at that point. Um, but, but people are traveling, the ones that I spoke to, uh, and they, do, they still want to go to South Korea and Japan. It's not that. They're just going to wait a little longer. Right. Um, and, and we could talk about pent-up demand, and we could talk about uh, revenge uh, travel. But as you highlighted at the end of your report, cost is prohibitive. Does that mean that we are not necessarily going to really see the numbers of Chinese outward-bound uh, tourists and visitors because the cost is a precluding factor. That's it. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Um, this talk of having this, you know, outpouring of Chinese international travel, uh, this, it's not going to be this big bang like we thought maybe at some point last year. Uh, and that's because the announcement came really soon. A flight capacity, not only is it able to respond as quickly as they need to uh, because of how quick the announcement came out, but now you're seeing some countries that are purposefully holding back on their uh, increasing flight capacity because their nervousness over lack of transparency and COVID infections in China. So absolutely, it is going to be a slower rollout, at least internationally, uh, than I think that many previously thought.